In order to execute an instruction, the first thing we're going to have to do is take a look at the 8-bit opcode and take it apart and determine which kind of instruction it is and what's going on with the instruction. And for that, we will have a module to do instruction decoding. So this module will be called Instruction Decoder. There will only be one instance of that. And it takes as input the 8-bit opcode. This could be coming from the instruction register, for example, but we won't worry about that. And this module is completely combinational. It's going to look at these 8 bits and determine a number of things. And the most important thing it determines is what kind of instruction we've got. So the op type, or the operation type, is the category of the instruction. And we also look at the uh, register fields and so on, some other fields in the instruction, and isolate those with this combinational logic. So let's take a look at our instructions. And here we've listed all of the instructions, except for no op, which is all zeros, and everything else, which is considered to be an illegal instruction. And we can see um, our strategy will be to look at the first four bits and that will determine almost which instruction it is. And in the case of load and store, push pop, move immediate, and add 16, we'll also need to look at the fifth bit. And in the case that the instruction starts with 1100, we'll also need to look at the second four bits, or the second nibble. And that will determine which of these 10 instructions we have. So we should note that looking at only the first two bits is enough to determine whether it's a move instruction or not. So uh, we'll actually look at the first four bits, but uh, there are four different possible combinations of, that we will uh, see uh, fall into the move category. We also have some other fields, such as the registers. In the case of uh, all of these, the destination register is in the final three bits. and uh, for the move instruction, we have another register, the source register, in these three bits. And for the add 16 instruction, we have a couple of fields for the source and the destination. And then for the ALU, we have the, condition co uh, the function codes. And for the branch instructions, we have the condition codes here. So we'll also pull off those fields. And you can see that those will be output from our module. The source and destination register fields, which are three bits, and then for the add 16 instruction, the 1-bit destination and the 2-bit source. And then for ALU, we have the 4-bit function code. And for the branch, we have the 4-bit condition code. So let's take a look at this module. And um, here we are defining the types. We have a 5-bit code to indicate what type of instruction it is. And here we have all the different categories of instructions. And we see, for example, ALU, uh, branch, and then we also have no op in the illegal uh, instructions. So if we scroll down here, we can see our module definition. And we have, as input, the 8-bit instruction. And then we have the outputs that I just showed you, the type, the register fields uh, for normal instructions, and then for the add 16 instructions, the 4-bit function code field, and the 4-bit condition code field. Uh, the opcode is a little bit tricky to uh, determine, but the other fields just are uh, simple. They come straight out of the instruction. For, so you can see that we're pulling out the register, the destination register from the low order three bits here, and the function code, and the condition code, and so on from the appropriate fields in the instruction opcode. For the op type, uh, we have a always comb with a big case statement. And the case statement uh, just ends right here, so it's not too large. And it is casing on the first four bits of the instruction. We start by defining it to be illegal, unless otherwise uh, we set it to something. And here we have all four combinations that start with 0, 1, and that is the move instruction. And then here, for example, if it starts with 1, 0, 1, 1, that's an ALU instruction. And then down here, if it starts with 1101, that's a branch instruction. For uh, some of these instructions, uh, such as the 
load and store, they both start with 1, 0, 0, 0, and then we need to look at the fifth bit. So we see that going on uh, right here. We're looking at the fifth bit here, and if it's a 1, we have a store instruction, and if it's a 0, we have a load instruction. Likewise, we deal with push and pop, and the move immediate and add 16 instruction types. In the case where the first four bits are 1100, which is this case down here, we have to look at the second nibble, and that's going on right here. We're looking at the second set of four bits, and we do a case on that and set op type accordingly. And uh, finally, um, we look at the combination of 0000, zero, zero, zero as the starting four bits, and if the second set of four bits is also zero, then it must be a no-op. But in all other cases, we have an illegal instruction. So that's all there is for the instruction decoder module.